This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter, here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in the sunny beach neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. We're ready to talk tech with you guys. We got the crew with us here, first of all, on the couch from Big Bank International Esquire, the gadget guru over there, John Chichilla, sir. I didn't know which one of us you were going to be talking about first. Well, How's it going tonight? Well, starting with you, of course. Because Chilla starts before crazy. <laughs> CHCR. Okay, I can, I can, I can align that. And it's crazy with the K's. Oh, that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> also with us, speaking of the crazy with the K's, it is Crazy Kraus, Ron Kraus. Hello. Also, also dealing with technical, techno, technological thingamabobs over at Big Bank International Esquire. Yes, sir. We didn't have to brand protect you this year, this week. Uh, yes, so, no brand protection. No, issue. no, no, no blue sweat, blue uh, shirt that's uh, messing up the white balance on all my my cameras over here. I appreciate that, sir. You're welcome. Thank you guys for joining us. A big Google News Day, of course. Um, a lot of going on here, a lot of stories. Uh, so let's get into it. First of all, please go check us out at awesomecast.com, uh, where uh, you can uh, check out past episodes. And the like, and uh, find out where to subscribe to us and rate us on your favorite podcast app and video versions on Facebook and YouTube. Email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. That's where you can get at Producer Missy if you're interested in advertising on the show or if you're interested in joining us here in, as our live studio audience. Um, please uh, hit us up, Awesomecast, on the tweeters as well. And, uh, and like I said, on the Facebook page where we go live here every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you to our streaming partners at riverspgh.com, carrying us Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. Eastern time, and the 405media.com that carries us weekdays at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern time. We have some other partners we'll be throwing in there very, very soon. Uh, also, uh, if you are catching us here on the Tuesday night on one of our Sorgatron Media streaming partners, um, whether the, the, the Periscope or the Twitch or anything like that, if you want to be part of the chat room, be part of the conversation, please head on over to the Facebook page uh, for Awesome Cast and join us there in the chat room. That is the chat room that we are keeping an eye on uh, right now. Um, also, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesomecast, including our friends at the Coffee Club $5 level, Matt Weller and John Diggy DeGore. And at the fan of the show, dollar level, uh, our long, long time Patreon supporter of Michael Fedor. Thank you so much, Mike, for uh, uh, being a part of this and everybody that's supporting the show and helping to keep the lights on for us. Sun's already gone, man. We were like two minutes into the show, but we just would have waited, right? Perfect. Time. Anyways. Oh, look at that white balance. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> anyways, being the video producer here during this podcast. But anyways, um, so let's get into it with our awesome things of the week. Ron Krause, what's your awesome thing, sir? My awesome thing, because I am an Android guy after all, is um, the new Stadia is coming. Um, now, granted, it's got a lot of lots to prove yet, but the concept is very interesting. So essentially, they're looking, they're doing, you know, video gaming anywhere, anytime. As long as you have a Chrome browser, it's supposed to work. This is this is the culmination of you know what we've talked about it you know for years with your on live it's streaming, um it, it, it's it's going to be coming off of the Google servers right? Essentially yes. Um so we were looking at a little bit of the uh, the abbreviated version of of the presentation. Um so so it, it, they're going to have a controller it, it's going to be integrated with things like YouTube where you're watching say uh, they're showing like an Assassin's Creed video and you hit play and it loads up in your browser instantly. 
You can save states, bring it over to your Android device. And of course, this can be a little bit, this is like a really, really hype video with lots of words. <laughs> But anyways, they say they're going to be streaming at 4K at 60 frames per second HDR. Well, that's all about a behind the device. Soon. Yeah, right. What's that? It's all about the device. It, yeah. It'll be tailored to the device you happen to be using at that time. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if you're going to get 8K on your you know three year old Android phone, but mm -hmm. but the idea is truly play anywhere game this is the nirvana everybody's been waiting for right absolutely absolutely depending on how much this costs per month per year how much <laughs> do yeah. i know we for, don't have any of that do, information do I pay yet for games is it subscription based yeah there's a lot of unanswered the questions. one very interesting thing is that controller and i'm i probably in that article i sent you mike i think there's um there's a picture of it it's wi-fi connected controller so it's connecting essentially directly back to directly to the server to the server directly so to the server. yes so, so so we were talking about that like if you if you're plugging a controller like i guess that's another level of latency right but that controller like ips right into whatever server <laughs> yeah supposedly and what'll, what'll be interesting is if you can use the assistant button mm -hmm. and say play this on my chromecast on xyz tv why couldn't you do it on a chromecast in theory you could in mm -hmm. theory you could and i believe they mentioned that did in they? one of the articles oh, i read they? yes so ideally you're telling me that anything that i have a chromecast connected to any television i have a chromecast connected to i could play i could just turn it into a console basically that's and the as idea. long as you have the bandwidth i, I obviously right uh, but you know, if you're, I mean, in a FiOS customer kind of situation, you know, uh, I mean, how many, how many, you know, hunt, you know, what, what was a gigabit internet, uh, providers are, are, if you're, this, this is for our city folk that have access to this basically. So, um, but, but still I, I, it's probably if you have lower for say HD gaming, it's probably perfectly adequate for the rest of us. But I, look at the way we watch a YouTube video, right? Mm -hmm. I can, I can stream a YouTube video pretty much anywhere at mm -hmm. pretty decent quality yeah and let's be honest too you can pause that video pick it up on the way home you know you watch it on your pc while you're at work if it's not blocked and it, you <laughs> know pick it up halfway through and finish it at home you blocking the gaming uh streaming services at work and everything yeah so it so it, it, it looks like you know oh, at least ideally they say they're going to launch this year they're going to have more during the summer which i imagine that's going to be an e3 presentation no i would think it's going to be their event I their event their io event yeah oh of course io that makes more sense yeah that they, they'll hold this everybody group. seems to be dropping out of e3 yeah e3 why would they show up yeah yeah if they've never been there before why would they show up right right yeah so uh, this is interesting we've we've seen them kind of playing with this if anybody's got the horsepower to do something like this on the back end in the cloud is uh is these guys amazon supposedly also talking about doing this we know microsoft's in the works mm -hmm. of it uh, playstation already has something to this effect uh with their services so i mean this is this is the next generation guys and don't forget what john said earlier before we get one on the air you know keep in mind google has a past mm -hmm. they will drop things yeah, will this go the way of reader or or or, or inbox? In, all right, pour one out for inbox. that's going down, <laughs> down this week. It's the thing that helped me. But no, but it's always something you have to keep in the back of your mind, though. You know what I mean? It has happened before. So again, that whole how much is this going to cost? What is our investment in this yeah. going to be? And that's a bigger thing. If if this is like you're dropping forty dollars for an Assassin's Creed, which that's again that's another, another question of is this going to be a service situation, which I feel like is more digestible for something like this that does not have the same, you know, yeah, it's Google and Google's not going anywhere, but we don't we can't say the same about their individual services. You know, I've heard some people on a couple other podcasts talking about the service <laughs> oh oh there's a we'll talk about why something just went off here but uh, there's i've heard some people talking about those services i forget at the moment their name escapes me where you essentially rent an online gaming pc mm -hmm. and it's like a 20 dollar a month <laughs> charge 
and it's always on and you can have so much hard drive space, things like that. So is this going to become that where it's okay, you can play any game you want to play, but you're going to pay a monthly fee. And then do you have to buy the game on top of it? it it's going to be interesting to see how it all goes. But it's very cool technology, and that's what we talk I, about. I here. think it's going to depend on the the game manufacturers and are they going to buy in <laughs> and develop to this. Uh, Potter, Tiny Share Podcast out there says, also think YouTube Music, Google Music, YouTube Red, YouTube TV. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Google, the shine on Google is kind of going away these days. You know, it, it's hard to get excited about things anymore because of their latest track records, right? Um, so, I mean, it, it's, yeah, Google has really become the, like, hey, that's cool, but I know, Google, you've done me dirty in the past. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't, I don't, you know, well, how does that apply? You know, where we were saying, oh, what about Reader? What about Allo? What about this? So, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Chilla, what's your awesome thing? My awesome thing is... Microsoft made an announcement today. I'm always interested in what's going on between the, the Teams and Slack race. Mm -hmm. Microsoft is bringing eight new features to Teams, as the web page doesn't render. Um, they're bringing eight new features to Teams, um, including some DLP controls for Enterprise, which I thought was interesting. You can actually limit, like it'll pick up that someone put a credit card number or account number in there. And it'll block that from being shared out with the other participants in the chat. Um, they're doing some integration with Microsoft Whiteboard, which I've actually been really impressed with. I have Whiteboard on my iOS device, on my Windows device. It's it's pretty nice to use. And it is like a little miniature whiteboard anywhere you want to go. Mm -hmm. um, they're giving the ability to instantly stream with up to 10,000 attendees. Jeez. Um, 10,000. 10,000. Um, live. So good by WebEx. Yeah. Live captions are coming soon. Um, so when you, I think we've seen this before, right? Where Microsoft can instantly close caption, any of the content that you're presenting as well as transition or translate that into a number of other uh, languages. The thing that I'm interested in is the custom backgrounds. Um, so they're going to use intelligent technology with your video stream to do background replacement, including you can put your company logo in there. You can put where I think this would be interesting, right, is even for for a podcast like this to be able to do background replacement for everybody in the chat, no matter where they're at with like the awesome cast logo behind them. Mm -hmm. But that was a pretty cool concept. And then they have some other stuff, secure private channels, uh, intelligent capture. So you, if you point your point your webcam at a uh, a normal everyday whiteboard, it can grab the text off of it, grab the content off of it, and digitize it. So some pretty cool stuff coming. Um, the one thing I, I thought was really cool was they actually showed someone writing on a whiteboard. And it kind of made that person almost see-through transparent. Yeah, I, I don't know it. if you saw that Yeah, video. I saw that on there. They're almost transparent, and it's figuring out what's where as they move back and forth across the whiteboard to, to keep the whiteboard consistent regardless of who's standing in mm -hmm. front of it, which I thought was pretty neat. So a lot of really interesting, like, you know, machine, the machine work, you know. Uh oh we woke somebody up. <laughs> There's too many that devices. That was your watch. <laughs> But uh, no, that, that stuff stuff that I don't imagine Slack to get to. I mean, this is just Microsoft kind of putting the weight of their computing power behind them, isn't it? Which yeah. is kind of the trend for today, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Think about computing power, the ability to subtitle a live meeting in like multiple, on the fly yeah. in multiple languages. You want to talk mm -hmm. about the computing horsepower needed to actually pull that off. The important is saying it's good to hear it since uh, their work is getting rid of uh, Skype for Business for Teams, which I'm sure they're pushing everybody to. Yeah, that seems to be the cloud transition is one of the things Teams didn't have everything that Skype for Business had before. So as Teams catches up and they port over all the Skype for Business type stuff, mm -hmm. 
Teams continues to get new capability and pick up all the existing Skype capability, and sooner or later they will sunset Skype for business from a cloud perspective. Mm -hmm. Time will tell what happens to the on-premise versions. There is no team on-premise, and they recently released Skype for Business 2019 for on-premise implementation. So we'll see what happens there. Be interesting to see what happens there. Well, I'm going to go with Google with mine, and um, they. Uh, so we, we both Missy and I got emails because both of us have Google One accounts. It's a Google Drive, and uh, we both got free Google Homes. Wow! And it's blinking at you. This one's an. Uh, it is blinking at me. It's, it's it's an aqua. It looks like it would go perfectly in like a bathroom. Actually, it's the same color as my sink in the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> it looks gray. Yeah, what's that? Is it just the lighting? It looks no, gray. No, it's more green. Yeah, it's a little more green tinted. Yeah. yeah, it's a little more green. So, so we have like three of these, and we don't have internet at home. <laughs> we 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 don't. <laughs> what? So we have. Sorry, I can't do that. We Mike. have internet to this office, this office room that we are in now. And we have three of these. But the cool thing is, you can uh, group them together into a speaker cluster. So when I say, hey, mm -hmm, yeah. um, you know, play some music on Office, it will play it across both speakers in here. A third one if Missy over opens hers. <laughs> she re she's going to resell Producer hers on eBay. Did you see the look? Oh, I know. I I'm saw the I can look. No, no, no. I can feel the she's look. Gonna tether it. She's going to tether it to her phone at home and not let you use it. <laughs> That's a, we had considered it right because i know she's been playing with like the morning routines and everything uh since she you know read the the, the latest stuff on her boxes and, and things like that um but officially yeah this is these are emails that have been going out to people that um that that, that do the uh two two terabyte um edition of uh google one which we both have a terabyte because we have a lot of stuff up there um so yeah we're paying like ten dollars a month for stuff like that so it was kind of a nice little surprise. Like she got an email and I'm like, wait, wait, you're getting one. Wait, why am I? I've had this forever. And then I like the next like day I got an email and then they yeah. both showed up like Monday. There so does was... that mean there's a new model coming out next week? Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for exactly. sure. They're, Fire they're, they're sale. clearing out the old stock. By the way, if you still have Nexus sevens out there, Google, I'd love some of those too. I have one and I still like mine. I know me too. Did you have something to say producer Missy? Oh, I was just going to confirm that, yes, there was some, definitely some jealousy when I said, ooh, I'm getting a Google Home. Because <laughs> <laughs> he did. He turned around. And he's like, how are you getting that? Where, 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 what are you where doing with that? that? How are you getting from? it for free? Like, what's, is that a scam? <laughs> well, yeah, because how many, like, is this a scam emails? Have we had conversations about it in the last week? <laughs> oh, dear God. That's <laughs> it seems actually, like you're getting them, like, every other day. Actually, speaking of scams, I got a phone call today. Uh-oh. It was a very weird female voice, obviously a recording, mm -hmm. telling me that there was a problem with my Verizon account. Please press one. Oh, no. So I immediately hung up the phone and dialed 611. I just imagined a, no, 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 no. <laughs> and, 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 and the guy on the phone was like, why, yes, Mr. Krause. No, there is no problem. I see here you pay your bill regularly, but just keep it a mind out there. Mm -hmm. If anybody gets a phone call, you, the the actual caller ID came up Verizon, mm -hmm. but you know the Verizon lady voice. You yeah. know, there's that voice. Mm -hmm. It was not that voice, and it, just something inside my brain was like, "There's just something that doesn't sound right here." And so I called and, you know, called directly in and said, okay, what's going on here? And they're mm -hmm. like, nope, that wasn't us. <laughs> so just be aware out there, folks. Jeez. Well, anyways, well, you learn. You learn from the history of your phone calls and your Verizon. And, and guys, sometimes uh, those who do not learn history are doomed, doomed to repeat it. And that's why we have our good friend, Professor Buzzkill, who's had a very big day, apparently. Our friend Professor Buzzkill out there um, um, had a, a really big. Uh, 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 I think he hit. He hit a goal. Did he hit his goal, uh, Producer Messi? I did get the text updates. He was counting me down as we were getting closer and closer to the goal, and we have surpassed it. Okay. So he just made a nice announcement on Twitter that that we've beat a, a download record for the day. 
There you go. Professor B- Buzzkill, he's making history fun. Uh, the latest uh, I- uh, edition about Jesse James and the Civil War. Uh, Irish Things That Are Actually British was one of his latest uh, episodes as well. Uh, we got to go hang out with him on uh, Sunday, actually, and film some stuff for his fat- Patreon page. A friend of the network, a friend to history, uh, the Internet's favorite professor, <laughs> he goes by. Go check him out, ProfessorBuzzKill.com, and uh, listen to uh, the latest editions and a uh, great back catalog, if you like history, uh, over there for uh, uh, his podcast, ProfessorBuzzKill.com. Also, we were listening to it on Google Home. That works, too. <laughs> it is too easy these days. So um, loving that. So go check him out, ProfessorBuzzKill.com. A good friend of the show and the network here at the Awesome Cast. All right, we have a few stories that you guys have submitted over on the Awesome Cast uh, Facebook page. Man, somebody's caught up on me. I, I didn't realize how much was going into this, so bear with me. Chris Chris Whitlash, holy crap, you have a lot going on this week. <laughs> so um, where do we want to start? Do you, uh, actually, are you guys in this? Any, any you want to talk about first before we get into it? I've had air snuck out there. Yeah, that was a that was a surprise drop. I'm, and it's it's like we're getting news every day, right? Yesterday it was new iPads. Mm-hmm. Today it's new processors and cheaper storage upgrades for I think uh, MacBook Airs and MacBook or iMacs maybe. Oh really? Yeah, they they dropped some new. I wouldn't necessarily say it's new form factors, but they're definitely upgrades and cheaper upgrades for certain certain devices so um, are we going to get something new every day up until the march 25th (laughs) announcement is my question because i heard expect a new ipod touch tomorrow really wow Wow. when's the last time they did an ipod touch it's been a long time this announcement they have must be something they really want people focused on if they're releasing all this hardware stuff Mm mm-hmm What's the? It's the news. It's the streaming media. It's yep. what you're, it's going to be the different way that you watch TV now that you you're changing over to Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and your... I, I feel like when they do one of these laser focused presentations, they want to clear the runway mm-hmm. of anything that could detract. From there and from there. So own, if you're expecting iPads stuff. and you're so like crush it, yeah, right. yeah. So yeah, if you're if you knew you know you're getting an iPad around this time of year, we're not going to put that in the the March 25th announcement, right? We're going to we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk about it. It came, it went. It was that's so Been last there, week. Done that had a yeah, yeah, right, okay. And I I just have a feeling that they're they're saying that in the latest iOS beta that dropped. The support for the the air power is in there, so I'm wondering will we see that ahead of next wow. week or shortly thereafter? I, I feel like it's going to be like six days of Apple quiet announcements before <laughs> we hit this just huge. I'll be interested to see how they handle next week. I don't know. That was one from Dave Podner out there, Tiny Share Podcast. Is his note on this is those sneaky people at Apple. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll say Chris Whitlatch actually uh, uh, dropped several in here. Google Maps platform adds uh, new styles and uh, gameplay options for mobile games. Uh, he also notes uh, uh, Google unveiled a platform a year ago that enabled game developers to create location-based games based on its Google Maps technology. And now the company has just unveiled new options for the art styles and gameplay just ahead of the game developers conference. And this is uh, going into the article. Uh, this was talking about how these, these tools, I believe, were used to make games like the Jurassic Park Alive or Jurassic World Alive game. That is, you know, their, you know, their Pokemon Go of catching dinosaurs that I think were some of us playing it here on the show. I've never played that. I remember like, trying the, the Ghostbusters one out. Like Doug or somebody was. But yeah. I never played I know. The... I know somebody. Oh, I think Matt Carlins was playing the Jurassic Park game, actually. Um, so uh, th- those are moving ahead again. Just just Google with more gaming uh, things going on. Uh, let's see. He's got an article in here. I'll leave you guys to read uh, about uh, uh, playing games can build 21st century skills from research. And... Uh, this was this was a kind of a cool one. Uh, there was one about how retailers like Disney are actively engaging customers with uh, with AR, with augmented reality. Uh, we talked a little bit about Lego, like how how like when I went to the Lego store, they had the camera. You hold up the box and it shows you the set 
right? It, it looks like it's kind of more or less stuff like that. Um, they, they talk about a couple of things that happen in store, but one of them that I've actually had to experience from this article that uh, Chris Whitlatch uh, uh, shares with us. Um, have you guys been to the the theater and the movie app pops up at the beginning where you can load an app and play like a space battle game? I have not seen that. So they, this is something that Disney Disney's theater. actually worked with. Uh, apparently, none of the theaters around here, um, they, in partnership with uh, National Cinema Cinemedia, um, they created a pre-show augmented reality game based on Wreck-It Ralph as well. And again, this is one of those things where you load up the app. They have a you know some sound effects in the background up on the screen, and then like a full game. Uh, you know, you 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 get to play a full game. I played a racing game one time. Because uh, I knew it was coming, like I saw the thing in the in the uh, in the like they actually had like a little display for it um, out in the in the lobby, and I was like, oh okay, you know, I downloaded it one time. And it probably lasts a, like a minute or two, um, but it's funny. It, it 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 focuses in on the screen in your theater or whatever size that is, and you know, on your phone. Uh, so uh, oh, this is cool. It, it, it's it's I mean, it's very gimmicky for sure. It's a very quick play game. But again, then you can upload the scores and 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 do the whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you know, it's connected to your Facebook or whatever, and you can see if any of your friends played played in the theater too. So uh, it, and that's the kind of stuff that like are being actively used in augmented reality. <coughs> so um, and of course, it's going to be you know media, you know, display stuff like that, especially around theaters. So. Um, also, I don't know, anything else you guys want to ch- touch on in here in the, uh, user submitted? Smart. Let me check. I see Netflix is, uh, doing their follow-up to Bandersnatch. It's going to be Bear, Bear, Bear Gr- Grills. What's that guy's name? Bear? The survival show. It's Bear. a survival show. You versus Wild. It'll put you in control of the survival, the survival host in the viewer's hands. <laughs> so Riz, Riz notes on this. Do you either drink pee or drink pee. So, uh, <laughs> although the whole ninja thing, seriously, a million dollars to play a video game. Hey, if everybody's paying attention to it, and now with Google, <laughs> you can oh, hit play, yeah. and it'll work. So that's all. That's going to be even even bigger of a deal, right? Because if you're going to, okay, so EA reportedly paid Ninja a million dollars to play Apex Legends. Um, so. It's just uh, one game, one round. Just for uh, yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Doug Doug Dirt is saying uh, from shouldidrinkthat.com and Yinsla Barbecue. Uh, that's a large amount, even for Ninja. He acknowledged to CNN in December that he was making uh, five hundred thousand dollars per month, more more on a good month. But that's a split between Twitch, YouTube, and sponsorships. And here he got a million dollars just to play a little bit of Apex Legends. John, we're in the wrong business. <laughs> you didn't get good at games, man. That's right. That's why. Why do you think we're poking at Twitch over here? Come on. <laughs> uh, but uh, but it, that's where we're at. And again, like like look at that. Like that that encourages people to get on that game. They're just they're just rolling out their. I mean, look at the growth that game has had. Right. Um. You know, kind of I, outpacing or in pace with uh, Fortnite in growth. Uh, they're releasing their first game pass, which is going to turn into twenty dollars. Big money for them. You know, with you know the percentage of those people are going to shell out the money for that. We know they do from looking at Fortnite. Um, and then on top of that, you know, what would you say? Uh, uh, the Call of Duty Mobile they yeah. unveiled, which that looks looked like, that looked really cool. And it actually like the old Nuke Town, like it yeah, brought yeah. back it brought back like the nostalgia memories of oh, I want to pick this up and play. It's a freemium. It, it's going to be like a Fortnite freemium ish, right? Uh, so it is going to be. I thought you had to buy the game, so you don't have no, to. No, no, I, I think it's free to the play. Thing I saw today it was going to be free, free okay. to play on your phone. So I mean, it's not going to be. I mean, all the guys that want to be precise Call of Duty players are going to bitch about that, but still, you know. Uh, but it's got the boat level, the Duke Town level. I recognize a couple other levels in there. It's got some of the blackout modes from the newer black ops um I, I you know i i get my ass kicked if i boot up that that black ops that came with my xbox one i'm not going to bother with it but man i might jump into this yeah it when can't it's hard to try and i'm one i'm rethinking the whole ninja gets paid a million mm-hmm. i wonder if we see those values double triple with the google piece where it plays right into it you now now anything i'm watching anyone play i can 
automatically start up and play along. Yeah, and how much of a cut do you think they give him mm -hmm. for people that click the play button? You know, yeah, like hey man, based on him. Hey, let's jump in, play a game. Yeah, click a button. You know, heck, even if it was one percent. Oh, so 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 think about that too. And I know we're going back to the Google Stradia thing. <laughs> um, but there was a part in there where you can there these save states that you could do. They talk about how you can save your state, like in Assassin's Creed, pick up on your your uh, Android and, and pick up where you left off, right? And even using the same controller, let's say you just swap screens. Um, <laughs> you can you can take those late save links, turn it into a link. Send that link to somebody and have them pick up where you are in the game. You just bitly linked a spot in the game. A precise a moment. A precise moment in a, in game. a game. Hey guys, if you want I wonder if play, you can rewind that. Like if you so if you click that link and play and you're like, oh, I want to go back to that so, spot. So imagine this. You just click the link. Maybe again? not an Apex Legend, but let's say another more like single player game that doesn't have a lot of Assassin's going on. Creed. Let's say Assassin's Creed. You're a ninja, you're you're a badass ninja game player, right? Um, and you're, you, you have this, this sequence that un unveils It's a really badass sequence that only he could get put you in the position to do. And be like, Hey, you want to be like in my shoes moments before this really badass thing happens in the game. Uh, here's, you the set, right. here's the state. Let's see how you deal with this. It's an interesting theory. Obviously, it would be tied to your like gamer account. Not You've already his. bought the game. You've already bought the game, right? You already pay for the service. There mm -hmm. is no buying, or mm -hmm. maybe there is no buying games. We don't know. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> who knows? Either way, you're you're bought into it. But that's a new experience that you can have. With Even that. the idea of like a speed run, mm -hmm. like okay, I did this level in X amount of time, and then Ninja provides his link. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you can do. And then maybe it has some kind of uh, scoreboard feature, or no, that you could post it to YouTube. You know, you post your results to YouTube. You know, that's it's definitely it's, an interesting idea. Riz also Riz has also uh, shared one in here. Uh, there was an article on Kotaku about um, what's on my old Dreamcast memory card in 2019. Somebody dug up their old like the VMU, and and, and Riz knows this. If you're being real here, Dreamcast was an amazing thing. Remember, this was like the first one that was Dreamcast was running on Microsoft's Windows CE, right? Mm -hmm. It was, um, you know, the first, you know, I think one of the first one where it looked like it had like like Power VR, like some desktop, you know, graphics, you know, as part of it. But also those VMUs were those memory cards that had a screen on them. They looked like a miniature Game Boy. They were they were the old Tamagotchis, right? Like a lot of times you could. When that was supposed to be the thing that I don't I don't remember because I had a Dreamcast. Mm -hmm. And I don't. I wasn't a big uh, um, Final Fantasy person, mm -hmm. but that was the big promise: was you were going to be able to like train your character on the go. You were going to be able to do all these things mm -hmm. that I don't remember Why any game. Your console. I don't remember any game. I heard like, making I heard like Sonic it. Adventure. You could put your little character on there or something, right? But I think you just put it on there. It didn't do anything to your character. Where. Mm -hmm. The promise was because remember it had like an A and B button, mm -hmm. a little like directional. You were pad. supposed to, and a d little directional pad. You were going to be able to play like mini games to level up your character and to do different things. And I, also, it did have a shortened life, so maybe it just did, they didn't roll anything out out with it yet. Yeah, that remember, was for there was Gen a Star 2. Wars game for that that I really liked that never came out. I don't think it came out for any other console mm. other than that. So that's just one of the big games. What I was played. the Star Wars game? can't remember it had like mace windu you know like we have a thing called google ha it was like half <laughs> side scroller half 3d um was it the episode one game i don't think so i think it was the clone wars or something but anyways well <laughs> hey there's there's one thing that i need to, to comment about yes star wars demolition the only thing that i cared about on dreamcast and i think that it actually did have some of the stuff with the little pad shenmue Jedi shenmue power. yes Shenmue was big, and, and Shenmue was in this article as well, mm -hmm. um, because there were like a lot of toys and things you would collect too. And uh, I can't remember what all it did Jedi with the VMU battles. though. What, what what was it? Jedi power battles. Interesting. Yeah, that was one of those kind of oddball. They had so many random Star Wars games around that era. So it's, it's probably around the time of the fighting game too, right? 
the powers battles of Terra Kai or whatever. I don't it was. remember that one. It was it was a PlayStation One game, I think. But anyways, uh, so I want to give a shout out to our friends uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza right in here in up the street from uh, our studio here in Beachview. Our friends at Slice on Broadway, as well as over at Carnegie, PA, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, again, helping us. Uh, we, we come in here during the, you know, the, 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 dinner, the dinner time, and we got to get fueled up. Uh, some of us coming in uh, straight from work, I believe. Uh, so thank you so much to our friends over there at Slice on Broadway, supporting our, our energy levels and our stomachs here. Go check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and let them know that the awesome cast sent you. All right, guys, what else do you want to touch on here in the uh, stories for this week? I'm leaving DirecTV now. Oh, no! That's not awesome! <laughs> well, actually, I think it's going to be awesome. So as everybody probably already has heard a million times by now, but DirecTV is raising their prices. Mm-hmm. Um and I have decided that for the price raising, I can jump, <sighs> bless you, Sorry. to Hulu Plus Live TV for, I think it's 44 or $45. And then, you know, a lot of people will say, but wait, what about AMC and uh, uh, my zombie shows, you know? Because mm-hmm. cause my wife has to have her zombie Gotta get show. your zombie shows. So we can do AMC Premiere for $5 a month. And so we're still at $50. We're at the $50 raise in the cap. But now that will also include all of the Hulu uh, original content. So to me, that's a much better system. So actually, well, unless suddenly Apple comes out with some amazing thing. I don't think they're going to get the. I think they're going to have a bunch of content, but I don't think they're going to have a whole replacement replacement with everybody service. no yeah well so but so for right now it's uh hulu plus live tv for for me you know goodbye direct tv now you were great while you lasted but it's time to move on and that's the whole idea behind cord cutting right right you right. can jump from one service to another and go where the the better price is so that's what i'm gonna do absolutely sorry Messing with the white balance on Chilla over there. <laughs> My uh, sneezing threw it off. Yeah, yeah. Apparently it did. We got you. You look. You look mostly the right color over there. Anyways, um, no, mostly I, the right color. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, yeah. I think it, you know that that makes a lot of sense. Um, and and you mentioned AMC, and that made me think about how much. Um, I I recently jumped into Halt and Catch Fire again, uh-huh. season three. I didn't. I didn't watch that show, so I will have to. Uh, four seasons are on Netflix. Okay, um, and I think there's only four seasons. Um, uh-huh. But it, it is um, in, in this in the in the season I'm in now. Um, they're pretty deep into a a chat company in 1986. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and just moved from Texas to California, and they're kind of dealing with that whole. So it's like Silicon Valley, but less funny. Okay, in in the 80s. Um, so Very cool. It's it's if you like. I lived through the eighties. <laughs> well, there you go. I and I did. I grew up through the eighties, so you know it's it's kind of cool to see like oh this was the stuff that was happening when like I got a Nintendo. There's actually a, an episode where they got the Nintendo, and for like one episode they're just playing Duck Hunt and talking about their problems. Oh, and, and, but it's cool. like it, and then and then the next uh, like one like, it's them trying to beat Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the point where they break their television and then get a projection TV to be it. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like the projection with the three lights in the panel that, that pop up. I don't know if you've ever seen one of those. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I had a friend that had one of those, like, way after the fact. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, no, it, it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's, it's, I remember people talking about it when it first came out and uh, how representative it was. And uh, I, I thought it was pretty cool, um, you know, look at things. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's super geeky. It's drama. It's, you know, an AMC drama. It's, it's, there's a lot to it. And it got a lot of great actors in it. Oh, very cool. I'll have to so, check it out. Um, but, um, Chill, have you ever watched that? I have not. And it seems like it's right up your alley, too. But, uh, let's see. Uh, so, Chilla, tell me about Angry Birds. So, AR. Ang- Angry Birds is, and it sounds like from what I was reading, Angry Birds actually has like an AR version for like the HTC Vive and. Mm. A couple of the other 
headset type oh. VR units. Okay, and this is just unveiling for just on my phone. The, yeah, so what they're doing is they're bringing it to iOS first, and it sounds like it will come to Android. This reminds me, do you remember the Apple thing where it was like iJustine with the iPad on two different sides of a table mm -hmm. and kind of knocking down each other's fortresses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This kind of reminds me of that same type of thing. It looks super cool. What I'm interested in also understanding is can I rotate around that and play from different angles? It looks like you can, because I mean, it, it, like the movement wise, we're seeing in one of these videos, like they're not they're not going all the way around, but you can see them moving around it a bit. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sure there's like you can't get terribly close to it, but now this looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, it looks it looks like it would be it would be one of those things where you could sit around a coffee table mm -hmm. and and play with your friends at home. I pass think. the control. You know, Either, the or what'll around. be interesting is what happens if you don't even have to pass the phone around, right? Oh yeah. What happens if you play from your side and I play from my side? You play from your side and I play from mine. I, I don't know. It just seems like a a very cool concept. That where, is a very cool concept. Where Angry Birds I don't know, I I get kind of bored with the side scroller drag my finger, alter kind of the angle which I'm gonna angle trajectory to play at. I don't know. It looks like a lot of fun. Angry Birds debuted on the iPhone ten years ago. We've been playing it for that long. Angry Birds is ten years old. Wow. I mean, I remember playing it on my first iPad. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. That in the Back to the Future game. Back to the Future game. Oh, I still need to beat that on the Xbox. I think I'm in the fourth episode of it. So anyways, um, yeah, wow. No, I'm looking forward to that. This is coming out um, uh, late spring, so uh, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll be playing with that here a little bit in the studio. Um, let's see. Also in here, I know we had a couple gaming things. I see Halo Master Chief Collection is coming to the PC. Um, apparently as individual games. Now, I played Halo first on the PC myself, so I'm kind of, I kind of like to see this happening. But also, kind of goes with Microsoft's kind of. The PC is part of the Xbox universe <laughs> uh, situation that seems to be developing right here, right, Ron? Gaming everywhere, mm -hmm. and it's even going to be—it's going to be in the store, and it's going to be on Steam. Explicitly, it's going to be on Steam as well. So that's that's kind of cool. Um, Carmen San Diego. Speaking of games on on Google, um, there is a Carmen San Diego game on Google Earth that completely makes sense. That oh, that's completely awesome. Completely makes sense. Hey, listen, guys, I played Carmen San Diego on the Nintendo. That is, do you, do you guys remember what Carmen say? Where in time was Carmen San Diego on the on the NES? I have to admit, I only re know about it because of my children. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. so you're like late into it. So we're talking about how about how about when you're for your I don't know my birthday probably maybe Christmas I get a box and it has a Nintendo cartridge and get this an encyclopedia. Wow. Like a mini encyclopedia that fits in, in, in you know, a box like this big, right? Like the same size of a, you know, width and height of a, car, of a Nintendo cartridge. Box. Okay. So basically the entire game, one is like pictures next to text, entire game on your Nintendo, wow. on my Nintendo with two buttons, right? Yeah. And I need to, the, the entire game was an exercise in cross-referencing in an encyclopedia. They would give you clues. You'd look it up in the encyclopedia, figure out what the cross-reference was for the answer. Hmm. Very I'm trying to remember. Did, it, did they have... Where did it first launch? Was it on Commodore 64? Oh, yeah. It was, on, it was like, a computer game first. I'm trying to think. I think that's where I first played it. Was like Commodore 64 or... 286. I don't remember. I remember playing it. I just don't remember what I first played it on. And it's been different versions. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, the, the, the geography one was a little more probably visual than <laughs> the one I played, you know? And, uh, you know, it's, it, it, it's kind of fun. But yeah, now you can uh, go on uh, Google Earth and play it. Uh, you can launch the Crown. They, they, Google partnered with the uh, Hoff, 
Houghton Mifflin Harcourt to launch uh, the Crown Jewels Caper for some series of Carmen San Diego games in Google Earth. It plays like the old Carmen Sego, San Diego PC game here, according to The Verge. Um, visit different landmarks, talk to locals, and figure out uh, San Diego's next destination from their clues. Because remember, you've always just missed her wherever she was. Yeah. <laughs> and you just get clues to where she's going. Where but, she was headed next. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, And then there was that wonderful game. Yes, also did you have Rockapella on it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the TV series. Um, uh, Alex Carr is out there is, uh, is talking about, uh, oh, yeah, I had a couple of those games for the Mac OS 9. <laughs> yes. Encyclopedia, yes, like the print version of the Wikipedia. Yes. Uh, like before Encarta. Encarta. No, Encarta. How about Compton, Compton's Encyclopedia on the CDI? I had one of those in the library. That was a pretty big deal. Oh, boy. Uh, where are we with stuff here? Sorg. Yes. Tell me about Twitter's new Twitter app. Yeah, did you see this? Um, we're going old school with Twitter. We're taking the vowels out again, guys. Just like it's 2009 again. <laughs> so this is their new prototype app. Twitter. Twitter? Twitter? It's Twitter without the vowels. Right. Apparently, you can sign up for this. I think it's Android first on this. Well, look at that. Surprise, Android. surprise. And I'm sure it's because Apple has the limitation on how many people can be in a beta. Yeah, and they've been kind of enforcing that lately. <laughs> oh, wait, no. This looks like... Um, actually, this looks like this might be an iPhone version. Dang it. So that is an iPhone in the picture. Yeah, that's, yeah, an, that's iPhone an iPhone in the picture. In the picture. So, it, 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 so it's not immediately looking to solve any problems or anything like that. So... Uh, it, it's there are going to be beta features in here, I guess. Um, tests out changes it wants to make to the product. For instance, the company wants to uh, experiment with ideas around status update fields and icebreakers as your uh, uh, pin tweet to encourage conversations. So um, if you get in on this, you can download that and check out what they got coming up for it. I wonder how much stuff that gets prototyped here will see the light of day or... Well, we see a lot of things in here that never make it to the mainstream. And, and, and they've been really kind of peculiar in what they pick to decide to focus as rollouts, right? Well, we've seen, so. we've seen the same thing with Microsoft, right? Where, like, remember groups? Mm -hmm. I'm still, like, I really liked groups. I think it's a great idea. But I haven't seen it again Anywhere, yeah. since we, we're seeing the new Android stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's supposed to come out. I mean, they could pull it at the last minute like they did groups. I don't know. I, I wonder if this will be a way to crowdsource crowdsource ideas ahead of time to figure out what they actually want to push forward and what they don't. And you always have that interesting point of view where what happens if a lot of the beta testers really like it, but then the mass majority really doesn't like something. Mm -hmm. And how do you pull that back or... You just keep it. I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how well this works and how much the feedback of these users and the early adopter crowd transitions into the mainstream. Interesting to see. Uh, Microsoft is releasing Windows Defender extensions for your Chrome and Firefox. I imagine this is PC only because the add-on will still use Edge to open untrusted URLs. So. But it's weird because Edge is going to move to Chrome, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it, they, there's um, a sandboxing feature that apparently they can do uh, with with Edge with Defender for untrusted sites and things. So that's that's what that's what it's offering in the extension for your other other uh, browser uh, platforms, I guess. So uh, again, Microsoft kind of. Stretching out in interesting ways. And you ever think you're going to see a Microsoft extension for Chrome? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm waiting. I mean, I don't think we're too far off till Edge comes back to Mac OS. Yeah. Really feels like it, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'm guessing we'll see that before the end of the year. But Anything else in here you guys want to touch tell. on before we head out of here for the day? I think you hit them all. I think we hit them all. Hit them high. <laughs> well, one, one personal thing for me, the wife finally got rid of her iphone 6 and what? went and went to the sx or Whoa. xs sorry she went from 256 like so she went from a 16 gig iphone 
six. Jeez. To uh, two fifty six. Is she editing X-S. movies on that thing yet? No, not yet. But I have to say, I am very, very happy to s- her transition to that device. Mm-hmm has gone very well. And I have to say, I we have talked about it on the show before. Mm-hmm. I was more than nervous about her losing that home button. Mm-hmm. But she uh she's she yeah, she's made it through it, you know, and she likes the phone. She loves the new camera and mm-hmm. you know it it's a good thing. What's interesting too and I I'm sure I take it for granted as a yearly upgrader. But can you imagine it I mean, you're usually every other, maybe every third year. Uh, I'm every other currently, yeah. Could you imagine going like every four? Four? <laughs> like the, the change. I couldn't. I couldn't just for like my adoption rate, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm pushing the limit on things, you know, as much as possible. So so it had to be like night and day for her. Oh, it's, it's com- well, between completely. Between speed and just. I mean, it's bad enough that my phone is already faster than my iPad Pro. <laughs> so. When I went to, uh, I went, I, I edited the majority of a uh, highlight reel for somebody um, lately on my iPad because I was on the road. So I just downloaded all the clips off of the iCloud and uh, went ahead and, you know, threw them in there and just did like a rough cut of it and then finished it off in Final Cut with all the special effects and everything. Right. right. Um, but it was like, hey, you know, does this look okay? We'll spruce it up. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's an easy rough drafter thing. And I, I'm actually have some business coming up on the road. Because I don't think I'm getting a new laptop in time um, where I want to shoot stuff on a f- professional camera, throw it on an iPad and, and do that. But but no, it, it's um, no, I couldn't imagine that at all. Like going from like a 5S to like the 8 or something or, or, yeah. or the well, X she or literally, like you know, from the 6 yeah. to the XS. And now she can literally carry around her entire um, iTunes library. Mm-hmm. So well, she what, is very happy. Well, that's what got me. Kraus called me. I don't remember if we talked about it on the show. Kraus called me and was like, I'm trying to clear off space on this device. <laughs> yeah. And there's like six gig of unknown stuff. Yeah. What, what is would that? you do? Yeah. I said, that was a problem like four OSs ago. <laughs> you had to back it up and restore it mm-hmm. to get rid of that weird unknown mm-hmm. use space. Yeah. He's like, she won't let me do it. I'm like, wait a minute. What are we talking about here? How much space does because I just need to get her 400 meg. Yeah, I needed to get to her do the OS upgrade. I'm like, we and what do you do? We we take her photos off here all the time and just back them up to Google Photos. Yeah, make they constantly dump the the photo library. I'm like, you what? Yeah, I because that was the only thing we could. She had a 16 gig phone, you know. I'm like, I and haven't. What half of that was probably OS on its own Mm -hmm. i haven't i haven't deleted a photo out of my photo library in in eons because i have a 256 gig device he's like what would you do i'm like go to the store and buy a new phone and that's That's what what we wound up doing yeah basically basically that's the answer did you do encrypted backup so that you didn't have to redo all of our passwords nope 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 we did we did it right there at the store Oh, so she had to retype in all of her passwords? No, um, I think she had to type three passwords. Okay. Because that's yeah. the biggest problem we have at our house is, like, I haven't typed my Facebook password in two years. What is my Facebook password? <laughs> oh, no. Well, don't forget, <coughs> Jamie's not the biggest. You know, Facebook's pretty much it. Oh, we had to call. The one time we had to call Google to get the Gmail password reset. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> which is like calling Jeez. someone in like the Philippines. Good luck. It works. It, the, their yeah. their support was super helpful. That's good. That's good. <laughs> well, guys, you know who else is super helpful? Our good friends Alex Cars at AlexCars dot media k a h r s. He's uh <laughs> he's solving the uh problem of uh, design and media from branding. Uh, uh, digital projects, Alex and do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Check them out at alexandercars.com, alexcars.media. He's got a lot of great stuff going on there. Done some projects for us here around Sorgatron Media, Psychic Media Services as well. He's on the West Coast, but hey, the internet means we're all together now, doesn't it? So go check him out at alexcars.media. And thank you, uh, Alex, for supporting the show here. 
Uh, so uh, with that, hey, we got a lot of stuff going on. Of course, Pittsburgh Current will be here Tuesday or Thursday morning. I believe Dave Bracey uh, will be joining us from Drinking Partners on that show. Uh, when their uh, beer fest coming up, going to be talking about that. Uh, so check out Pittsburgh Current Thursday morning, 10 a.m. And uh, we just recorded some new stuff for the uh, Indie Mayhem show. Uh, we had an Emmy in here earlier today. Uh, <laughs> Emmy award winning uh, edit- a video editor who's a professional wrestler. Jordan Styles will be on the Indie Mayhem show later this week. I believe new episodes of Bardic Mystery Tour went up yesterday as well. Is that right, Producer Missy? Uh, what, what else is uh, fresh on the network? Fresh on the network? Um, Bardic Mystery Tour. Uh, like I said, they just went up there and they're new to the uh, words not working, need more caffeine. They're new to uh, the network. Don't that's you? the word I was looking for. Thank you. Dungeons, great um, Dungeons and Dun- uh, Dungeons and Dungeons. Yes, Dungeons and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons podcast. podcast. Um, we also have a new Thrifty. That new came thrifty? out uh, nice. yesterday. So, yeah, so some new fun content. Fishing Without Bait, I think we have a new one with yep. Sheena Carroll and I don't recall his name, the other uh, musician that was with her. Steve. Steve. His name was Steve. His name was Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got his name in Ed the description, Steve. though. Uh, but, no, yeah, great. Uh, we had some live music that we recorded last week with them, and that's included in the episode. Uh, first of three episodes we're going to have with them uh, for that as well. So a lot of great stuff going on here. Crazy Krause. Yes, on sir. Twitter, all K's. Yep, Crazy Kraus on Twitter, Ron Kraus Facebook. Crazy Kraus and Chilla are your Twitter support team, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any Android issues or anything like that, I only have multiple Google Homes. I, 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 I was going to ask you the questions about what to do with my multiple Google Homes here, Chilla. You need you need all kinds of like fun lights and stuff. Yeah, that might need to happen. I need I need the curtains. I need I need the curtains. Say, uh, sun suns up, showtime. Blackout curtains go in. IKEA is supposed to be coming out with those. Yeah, yeah. Like and they don't look. They they're not like the the multi thousand dollar embed the the uh, blinds inside, inside the two the, the pieces panes of, of glass. glass. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. This yeah. is like a this is like a on a um, chain type. Well, that's what we need to do. Blinds, <laughs> roller blind kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody in the chat room. I know. Hey, John Providence that's been, was on the show a couple weeks ago. He was in the chat room hanging out. Our friend Dave Potter with the Tiny Shutter Podcast, Alexander Cars, and so many more popping down throughout the evening. Thanks, you guys, for joining us on our Tuesday night tradition. Here we'll be back again next Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Facebook Lives. And thank you, everybody. You have been our awesome audience. Thank you, producer Missy. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.